Okay, so we've already looked at how we can represent numbers in an integer form. So numbers like 1, 2, 3, and so on. Numbers that take on whole values. But what if we want to represent numbers like 1.23 or 3.14159, da 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 da. Numbers that take on values that have a very, very detailed set of precision. Well, in some, as engineers, we like to we like to somewhat do science, so we have our engineering form. We've got like 1e to the minus 6, or um, which is the same thing as 1 times 10 to the minus 6, and other sort of scientific notations. Well, what if we can represent binary numbers in a very similar form? Well, we get something called floating point numbers. Floating point. Or the IEEE, more specifically, the IEEE 754 standard for floating point numbers. This standard specifies single, pre single precision numbers, which are 32 bits, and double precision numbers, which are 64 bits, as well as um, quad floating point numbers, but not, not too terribly common as far as I know. Well. How are floating point numbers represented? We only have a set number of bits that we can use to represent these numbers, so shouldn't we only get 2 to the 32 or 2 to the 64 options? Technically, yes. So, how do they do this standard? Well, what they do is you get a set of bits. Similar like sign magnitude, we've got a first bit which tells us whether the number is positive or negative, We have, but now we have a set that says, okay, let's increase the range that we can look at. So let's look at an exponent set of bits. And for 32 bits, this is going to be 1 bit, this is 8, and then finally we have a set of fractional bits for all of the leftover parts. And this will be 23 bits available. So you might be wondering, how, how does this system, like, how does this system represent a number like 3.14159? Well, this is how it does it. So we've got a minus 1 for the sine times a sine bit times, and then now we're going to kind of look at it as if it was scientific notation. 2 to the exponent minus an alpha. This alpha is a bias that allows us to represent slightly more numbers in a, in a different way. I'll explain a little bit more of that later. Times 1 plus the fractional bits. This one here is actually for increasing the precision that we have available. So even though we only have 23 bits in our fraction, we actually have 24 bits of precision. And that's, that's a little bit too advanced of a topic for this course, so I'm not going to cover it too much. You'll, you'll probably find that out in uh, your later, you'll probably cover it in later courses. But when you don't have this one, that'll be something uh, called denormalized numbers. Otherwise, this one makes it a normalized set. Okay, so I've, I've talked about this a little bit, but what about this alpha? Why do we have this alpha? Okay, let, let's limit our range of numbers right now. Instead of having a 32-bit floating point, because I'm, I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to go through and handle all of that right now. Let, let's put it in a more manageable sense. Suppose we have a 6-bit floating point number. Well, we have one bit for the sign. Let's say I have three bits for exponent, and then two bits left over for fraction. Sign, exponent, fraction. Okay, so let's just let's focus on this exponent bit right now. I'm going to go ahead and write these out. We've got zero zero zero, one zero one zero one zero one, zero one one zero zero one one. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so why do we have that alpha? What if I told you that floating point can represent more than just standard numbers? What if it can represent concepts like plus or minus infinity, or a 0 over 0 case, or 0 over infinity, or not, a, which would actually be a not a number, because we have no way of representing it. Well, floating point can, and it allows us to do things such as with this positive and minus and, uh, infinity, we can represent basically a topologic closure on the real numbers, but that's a little bit advanced. We'll ignore that. 
So let's, let's cut off this set of numbers to help us represent these things. And before, I was telling you guys about normal, denormalized numbers. And the number zero. Let's say that that covers these numbers. So, how are we going to represent numbers that are negative exponents? The only way that we can do it is we set a bias. So, suppose I get to choose whatever I want for my bias. I'm going to set the bias to be 3. Okay, so then what do these numbers actually represent now? This one is going to be our 0, 1, and 2. And, and these are all going to be our exponent, like our total exponent plus the bias. And then this number over here is going to be our negative 1, negative, sorry, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Well, I totally got this back backwards. Excuse me for that. I'm sorry. This will be our 0, negative 1, and negative 2. And this one over here is going to be our 1, 2, and 3. Sorry for that. I was looking at my notes and I had it backwards. Okay, so what does that let us do? It lets us represent numbers like including the bias. This is exponent plus bias here. So this lets us represent 2 to the minus 2, 2 to the minus 1, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, and 2 to the 3. Okay, so let's do an example. Suppose I have the number 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 for our total number that we want to represent. How would we take this floating 6-bit floating point and represent it as a decimal form? Okay, so we know that we've got a negative 1 for the sign. We've got a 2 to the 2 minus 3, because 3 being our bias, alpha, times 1 plus, and then now let's let's take let's focus on this part real fast. We've got 0 0.01 in our binary form. What would this be in decimal? This is equal to 2 to the 0 times 2 to the minus 1 times 2 to the minus 2. Since both of these things are 0, this part over here is going to be 2 to the minus 2, which equals 1 fourth. Okay, so this is just 1 plus 1 fourth. So then let's go to the next step in our number. Negative 1 times 2 to the minus 1 times um, 5 fourths, or 1 and 1 fourth. Eh, I'm just going to write it like this. 1 to the minus 1 times 1 and 1 fourth. Makes it a little bit easier. 2 to the minus 1 is 1 half, so we get negative 1 and 1 eighth. And that's the number that we're representing in this value over here. 